everyone, Wanderbot here, and welcome to Boons and Burdens. It is a, it's a kind of wave survival roguelike made by the developer of Gunlocked, who made a kind of interesting shmup bullet heaven slash bullet purgatory that I really liked last year. And I uh, guess I'm excited to try this one out. It came out back in February, and I must have just missed it. I was, I, I've been busy. Uh, there have been a lot of other games coming out, and so I guess we're just going to dive in. I'm excited to try this just because there aren't a whole lot of Bullet Heaven developers that have made other Bullet Heavens yet, uh, or other roguelikes, and it feels like there's a lot to learn from the Bullet Heaven formula and express that in different ways uh, outside of the genre itself. And so this seems like it might be kind of cool. So next five chickens you eat don't heal you, effect can stack, lose 10 health, cannot bring you below 1 HP. Is that health or max health? Or portal radius is smaller this round. Portal phantom damage is larger. Let's go with the next five chickens we don't heal you. So the entire point of this is that we are supposed to survive for the rounds. Burden of phantoms. Oh, I didn't actually check. I think I'm supposed to kill this thing. All the while kind of hanging out, fighting stuff and grabbing resources. Can I fight those suckers? I might have to explode them, is the real answer. But yeah, so we want to weave around here, grab as much loot as we possibly can. That's a chicken that needs to be consumed, maybe. Okay, so we've killed one of the phantoms, at the very least. So unlike a regular bullet heaven, we only get upgrades periodically. Okay, so getting those the phantoms to explode themselves counts for finishing the run. So to some degree, we want to scoot in here, grab as much as we can. Financially. Okay, there we go. Yeah, grab as much of the money as we can, because we buy perks between rounds. Okay, let's just weave through. I like the art style. It's giving me very, um, very strong, like, Bone Razor Minions vibes. Which I actually really appreciate. I loved that game. And should probably just play it again. Actually. I haven't played it in a while. And I can think it was like it came out in 1.0, and that was great. And then the developer like did a bunch of other things for it, including like adding a more regular roguelike -y mode and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, which I don't think I've showcased as one of those games that is immense, but you have to like dig to find all the cool bits. Okay, so I can stay outside of the portal if I want to, uh, rather than leaving. I was hoping to find some more chickens, so I could roast them. Ow. Because, yeah, I don't heal upon eating chickens. We're still trying to get as much money as we possibly can. I want some more pickup radius if I can, too. Because, yeah, there's a lot of gold on the ground that I'm not able to pick up, but whatever. So, we can... Uh, so, effectively, we pick... Uh, I didn't explain this earlier, but effectively, we pick a bo uh, burden and a sacrifice. So, the burden is kind of our objective, and the sacrifice is what we, what we lose. Uh, let's see. Next chickens you eat don't heal you. It'd be bad to get both of those. Threat increases 4% faster this round only. Let's go with that one. That doesn't sound too bad. So we can use gems, uh, the money we were picking up to buy these things. So I can get a frost bomb, a blitz beam, three points around your staff, charge up, then unleash two beams forward. Totems gain extra range. That's a passive and isn't that helpful. And every five seconds, four enemies are marked with light runes that last for six seconds. When they're damaged, light beams strike them and up to three nearby enemies. Interesting. I think I'm going to go with the blitz beam. Okay, and then we can see other talents that are specifically associated with them that get unlocked. Now, if I do purchase... Okay, I already have it. I could sell it, but I don't think we want that. So do we want to get the light rune as well? Let's go with those two. And I can do a free reroll, see if I can get something else. So are these... Oh, are these tags? Hard to say. When Blitzbeam orbs are first created, they each fire a beam at a random enemy. 
So that's this one, this one. So we can upgrade it further. We can get a totem or divine quiver. I like the idea of grabbing upgrades. Lock a boon to keep it through rerolls and rounds. Only one boon may be locked at a time. I think I'm just going to pick that one up and we'll call it good enough, at least for now. Okay. So yeah, now I've got lasers on top of everything else. Oh, the, the totems. They move. Okay, so I will keep that in mind. Or is that a totem? I have no idea. Wait, Burden of Restraint. I don't know what I'm... I don't actually know what my objective is. Okay. Energy fairies are summoned to the edges of the battlefield and slowly make their way to the teleportation circle. Standing near them increases their speed, but if they're damaged by your attacks, their radius is reduced. Ten must make it to the circle to unlock the portal. Oh. Well, it's okay. We have an unlimited number of chances. It's not like we can fail. So, if anything, it actually sounds like I kind of want to slow them down. Or freeze them in place, maybe? Okay. Also like to find some more chickens as I'm running out of HP a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I can kind of play keep away with them. If I want to. So the reason why I want to do that, despite the fact that threat goes up over time, the reason why I want to kind of yeet us those dudes is we want as much money as we can out of one of these runs. And so I'm just going to keep playing kind of paddle ball with them. Because they're pretty slow. Okay. And so we've got some time to get in here and kind of yeet them around. There we go. I'm trying to avoid taking too much damage here. Because I don't know how much chickens even... I Like, I don't know if chickens can heal me yet. Okay, I'm going to start letting them reach the end. I think I've done more than enough. Well, am I? I'll give them a yeet if it's safe to do so. But I'm not going to put myself in a position where I'm taking too much damage here. There we go. Sneaking through and... Ow. Oh, those guys hurt. Yeah, sneaking through the enemy gaps is actually pretty satisfying. A little risky. How many are we at? Ah, made it. Okay. I can give that one a yote. Take my time. Hopefully get some more chickens in here. So, big unfortunate thing is my, my blitz beams, they fire in a rotational pattern. So I'm actually wasting quite a number of these. Ow. Yeah, I wasn't aware that the blitz beams would specifically... Let's see. I wasn't aware the blitz beams would specifically have like a locked radius. I was hoping it would be going elsewhere. Uh, I was hoping I'd be able to aim them, but of course not. This is the gun locked developer. That's not how this works. Where are your chickens, you cowards? Unless the chickens only show up when um, the fairies actually make it. It's possible. But yeah, if you notice, we now have uh, 1,400 gold gems. And yeah, one made it. It's fine. I'm not really expecting to be able to delay this forever. But I can delay it a lot longer. I'm not actually sure how practical it is. But it's kind of fun just batting them away with my uh, my wind blast. Okay, do we let him go? At this point, I think I have more money 
that I know what to do with? No. I always know. You can have like 42 perks here. So we kind of want a lot of them. However, the enemies are starting to get to the point where I'm not going to be able to safely uh, clear through them. At least not with my current setup. I need other abilities. Okay. Looks like the portal's open. And it's starting to charge. But yeah, unfortunately my my rotational upgrade is not going to do a very good job here because most enemies are not going to be within that radius. Okay. Think portals up? Hopefully there's some level of meta progression here so I can boost my my own pickup radius, maybe. Okay, only safe space is the portal area. Ooh, don't like that. Move back and forth on the battlefield touching haste beacons. Beacons grant you a bonus move speed. They disappear after seven seconds. Next chickens you eat, no. Innate ability reduces your gems by five this round. So I'll just have to live without. Rotating shield creates you mini bolts when other bolts pass through it. Wisps swirl around you. I'm gonna grab the wisps. And we have light rune. Oh, there's a difference between the light rune and the other one, huh. Explosive rune seeker near your cursor. Totem that spawns an orb every second. It's not bad. 24 freeze effects apply, summons a snowman. Autonomous moving totem. Okay, enemies marked by light runes are damaged by beam attacks. There's a chance that other enemies will be marked by it. How much money do I have? I have a lot. Let's see, every two times you recharge your staff, trigger Blitzbeam instantly. Okay, what's the last one? Light runes last longer and gain base damage every half second they remain on the target. Okay, so that's pretty good. How much money do we have? Enough for like one more if we're lucky. Blitzbeam orbs now fire Blitzbeams faster. Okay, let's go for that. I've yet to figure out exactly how Blitzbeam work works. Oh, it is, it is just the lasers around me as well. Okay, so Burden of Bounties. What is this one? Okay, demons become marked by bounty runes. Got it. So this is probably going to be a short round. So to some degree, what we want to do is play keep away from the... Um, the light up bits, maybe. At least until the loot goes away. Okay, we definitely are getting, we are triggering more. That, that rotational thing is, I think, the orb of light? But I could be wrong. Or no, that's that's probably the blitz beam, because the the light is the thing that is specifically marking a bunch of enemies nearby and triggering off of them. Well, despite the fact that this is going to be a shorter round, it is a lucrative one. I just wish I could pick up all of this stuff. Hopefully there's meta progression for this game because, um, ye gods, this is all sorts of good bits. And I, I want it all, but it is very risky for me to get close to like half of it. 
Where are your chickens, sir? Ow. There it is. Okay, I got it. Portal is charged. Got most of the loot. Not all of it. That hurt. Okay, what's the next one? Reduce burden choices for the next two rounds. Can stack, but it'll never go below one. All enemies have extra armor this round. Portal doesn't charge passively. Let's go with the this one. Okay, I was hoping that would heal me. Blitzbeam game gains extra base range, can do extra tar damage per target. Sure. Enemies damaged by beams have a 20% chance to be struck by another beam. Enemies damaged by beams permanently take extra damage. We have a lot of beam builds. Or beam abilities. So I should probably focus on that. 60 seconds of massive beam strikes an area around you and moves outwards, lasting 3 seconds, dealing a ton of damage. Sounds good. Yeah, I wish I, I could actually specifically identify what some of these did. Okay. Crystal construction. Construct, autonomous moving totem. When your abilities when you target it with your abilities, it creates beams. Energy compressor. Oh. Oh, we don't have totems, so it's not unlocked yet. That's not a terrible idea. Yeah, let's grab the crystal construct. I'm gonna just lock it for now. Okay. So Beamtown is kind of a chaos place. I'll have to go for like totem builds and some other things in the future just to see which work better, if any of them even do. Okay, right, and I can use my whirlwind again. I guess I could have used it the last round, but it cost me money to do so, and I don't like that. I am stingy to the max. Oh. My beams are killing all the flyers. My, um... I, I did, like, a short run before this just to try and see, like, how well I'd perform. And also to, like, learn the mechanics so I actually know what I'm talking about. Sometimes with roguelikes, there's kind of that feeling of, like... Oh man, I understand this implicitly. It's, you know, very similar to Binding of Isaac, Gungeon, Nuclear Throne, something like that. This is one of those roguelikes where I actually had to do like a little bit of run to say like, oh, this is how that works. Which actually is really good. Uh, it means it's fresh and interesting and just because it doesn't follow the template that I'm used to, there's... Oh, he's a boss? He is a boss. Okay, I think I can eat chicken again, which is good. How's the boss doing? Boss is doing fine. I must grab the cube. I don't know what the cube is. Ow. Enemies actually attack back. That's a weird feeling. Now, if I was practical, I could try and get my... No, I'm not fast enough. Yeah, I could try and get my, like, rotational orb thing to actually lock onto the boss and stay there for a while. But I don't think I can pull that off. Not with my current setup. I'll just have to make do without... do not have the hit points to take too many more of those. I was really hoping the chickens would heal me more than they do. I still think not benefiting from chickens for the first, like, five is not bad. We just got kind of lucky with a couple of things. 
Yeah, that one actually healed me a decent, decent amount. Yeah, I think the light runes are actually doing a very good job. Because the enemies are marked, and then I just delete them. A lot more enemies hanging out on the exit portal. Ow. I don't even know what hit me there. A lot more enemies hanging out on the exit portal. Whip. That I'm comfortable with. This is why I didn't want to go with that one that's like the exit portal is the only safe zone because I'm 100% certain I just get wrecked for that. All right. Bird of many, four smaller portals appear around the map, stand inside the radius to charge them, move outside to drain if not complete. Lose half your current health. That's a terrible risk, but I think I'll go for it. Uh, let's see. Totems gain extra range, recharge faster, chance to summon a turret totem. Totems grab stuff for you. Th that's actually kind of good. Okay. Construct a one value gem every time you damage. Oh, the crystal construct. Totem that, when active, deals five damage to enemies in this area. And yeah, we definitely want to go for a totem build someday. We also have. Oh, the Vengeful Spirit. I did kind of neglect my Vengeful Spirits pretty bad. Let's just go with those. I think I'm going to skip the other ones. They don't have a whole lot of money anyway. I actually forgot about the Vengeful Spirits. So big problem here is I have no health. Nice part is, if I survive this, I heal the full. So we're probably going to try and beeline for objectives here. At least to some degree. Okay, pop these open, grab the money, because even though I want to blitz the objective so I can heal back up, we absolutely want to... Ow. Get what goodies I can. Ah, something touched me. It's fine. I think I got meta progression of some sort. So what is this? So staff. So that's our attack then. Frigid Gust. So we also have a Pyromancer. Staff, Tome, char Charm. So what else did we have there? Chance to freeze enemies. And then Yeti's Puff... I didn't figure out how to use that ability. I guess I'll have to pay attention. Transform into a fire giant for seconds. Fire bursts out of the ground in a large area near your cursor. Chance to burn enemies. Leap in the direction you're moving, becoming invincible. Ooh, so a dodge. Yeah. Then we also have rings, but I don't think we can do anything with rings yet. Yet. So what about up here? Some of these things can actually be used. Okay. So these are options. Oh. Yeah, so where do I use this stuff? Do I go through here? Oh, that's just quit. But yeah, these red orbs. I was assuming it would be something like up here, maybe. But it looks like I can't spend any red arms. Well, it's okay. We'll just make it work, learn how to play. I, it's a roguelike, especially a weird one. Like, learning the ins and outs of these games are kind of tough anyway. Uh, let's see. Portals unlocked from the start, but charges slower.
Uh, let's see. Portal Phantoms. Because I could do this one. I think this is probably the easiest. I just can't use my innate ability, but I was I don't really need to on this round. So we're here for kind of as long as we want, as long as I don't kill the little bat creatures. Which is entirely acceptable. So we can use this first level to farm really hard. Or at least harder than we normally would. Now I'll see if I can also scale fire damage somehow. I don't know if that's like really a build option, but... There's got to be some things we can play with. Yeah, the other burden of the, like, hey, uh... Your first 50 gems don't count? That's not bad in the slightest. Oh, right. I don't have access to my dodge. That's... That's the downside on this one. Well, okay. I have access to my dodge. It just costs me money. And seeing as my goal is to get, you know, a solid thousand dollar reduce, we'll have to just leave that. I don't know what the... Let's see, I don't know what a couple of things are. Can I actually check? If I check options, controls, middle mouse, bu middle mouse button. Yeah, there's also auto-targeting, but we're not using it. Uh, sure. I can do... I can do middle mouse button. I'm just gonna leave that chicken alive. Yeah, that would have been helpful. So, the meter at the bottom is what charges... Uh, or what allows me to use my big move. And it seems to charge pretty, pretty quickly here. Oh, well, I killed some of the swarms. It's hard to, it's hard not to pick those up. So it looks like the glowy gems that I'm finding are how we, we charge that kind of lower meter. Okay, pick up what I can. Yeah, I still don't know what the big circular orbs are. Maybe I need to beat the run. Maybe I need to unlock some things before I can actually access all of this stuff. Or it's just not in the game yet. And considering class art options aren't, I wouldn't put it past the rest of this. Ow. Oh, it's middle mouse. Okay. Chicken bin eight. I was trying to use spacebar to trigger my special ability and uh, did not take for obvious reasons. Okay, I think I want to start blasting some of the some of the swarms as they go by. Currently, the threat level is tame, but even then, I barely have any crowd clearing ability. It is just pure regular damage. And so there, there is a very real possibility I'm going to get uh, swarmed in a bad way if I if I draw this out for too, too long. At least I'm not going to avoid killing them if they're in my way. Because I can take them out slowly. And... I guess I will say the bigger and more packed this becomes, the more of my, like, super move I can pull off. Which I should be doing readily here. Seeing as now I know how it works, and it's easy and accessible and very worth doing. I also notice I have a multiplier. I'm going to assume that only triggers um, when I pick up the, like, big gems, these things, maybe. Haven't figured that one out yet as much. There was some tutorialization, but uh, I don't know if it covered it all. 
And I don't know, maybe it was a little wordy. There's some games where I like actively want to learn how to play. There are other games where I just want to feel it out and just kind of enjoy my way through. This is definitely the latter. I like games that have like a knowledge base that you can just refer to. Like, hey, I've forgotten how to do this thing. How did it work again? Ow. Yeah, those explosions are painful. Where are we at? 53. Let's get the get the demon. Unfortunately, I'm not faster than the explosion guys. Eh, I'm a little bit, but like marginally so. And we don't have the ability to freeze them like we did on my previous run. Okay. Just keep running and avoiding. Yeah, like I said, it's actually pretty satisfying um, just scooting through the gaps in the enemies. It's giving me very much a... Um, it's giving me a strong 20 minutes till dawn vibe. Obviously, the, um, the execution is completely different in a multitude of ways. But both of those games had this, like, very strong feeling of, like, I need to dodge and weave through my foes. Uh, almost more so than most other bullet heavens that I've played. Ow. And they move slightly chaotically. Okay, two more. There it goes. Interesting. Oh no, I do take damage when I'm in fire, fi big fire mode. I was wondering about that. I was being too cavalier about putting myself in harm's way thinking that I was all of a sudden immune or something. But no, I'm only immune for the dash, which I should be using. No amount of money is worth losing that much HP over. Okay, on the plus side, I was there for a while and we have 2,000 gold now. Uh, let's see, next chests are empty, chickens you don't eat, or loose in health cannot bring you below. I'm just gonna go with the empty chests. I'll make do. Okay, so Quaking Totem. Deals 5 damage to enemies in an area. Beams. Firebomb. When you use your innate ability, you also launch 5 Runeseeker Firebombs towards nearby enemies. That's pretty good. And I could go for Totems. Yeah, let's grab Firebomb. We could go for the Totem build. Kind of tempting. That's not what I wanted. Do I want to do Divine Quiver, though? Light Rune was good. Okay. I like it. Okay, Blazing Bird flies around you, then Heat Wave. Staff recharges faster. And then 40 times you recharge your staff, beams gain extra damage. That's not really that good. I still have plenty of money. Well, there's the Infernal Core. I 
All right, that should be good enough. All right. Oh, it's this one. Okay, so now I've got much more of like a direct flamethrower build going on. And I can dodge. I mean, I could always dodge, but this way I can actually like leap into the... Ow. Leap into the fray, I gotta remember that doesn't have a short cooldown. You can tell when your secondary is charged based on the, uh, the little thing rotating around your character. Now, I'd like to kick it here for a little while. See if I can find any chickens, seeing as I've taken a bunch of damage. Ah. Didn't get out of there fast enough. Okay, we already have a decent amount of money. Yeah, the big big worry is, of course, how much HP I have. Ow. I guess I gotta be way more careful than I have been. Right. Yeah, I guess my, my, like, beam builds from that last run unintentionally was actually pretty good. Must have been. Ah. I waited until last second and I shouldn't have. Where are my chickens at? Oh, it goes over time. Goes down over time. So I really have to hang out within these. Well, I did say I liked dodging around inside them. Let's go up to this one. Didn't work. Yeah, I must have had really good AoE last time. Like, I do a ton of damage. Ow. But there is only so much I can do, and... I, yeah, I might I might be toast here. Or did we let the threat go up too fast? Oh. I don't know if threat starts from neutral. Ow. I think that was another blast. I'm dead. Dang. Alright, let's uh let's take a look at the frost mage again. What was his ability? Freeze all enemies on screen. Yeah, that's actually really good. We have the knockback. Sure. Let's go back to the ice mage. And try and do that totem build. Yeah, maybe those beams were actually just considerably better than I thought they were. Okay, let's just go for, for the smaller portals, get what money we can, and then, yeah, maybe we... Maybe we don't try and farm the run. Oh, are the chickens in the chest? They might be. Yeah, that inherent freeze factor probably made this character a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Okay, I'm just gonna hang in and out here. There we go. Get that one done. 
We still have the chicken running around, but we kind of don't want to care about it yet. It's actually better for us alive than cooked, I think. Okay. Okay. I think we are good. Let's just... Oh, we got one more money thing. I don't think we needed the chicken. I see another chest. Yeah, so ch chests are the ones with the chickens in them. And I know I lose a little bit of money. Okay, health's back up. Ah, I got distracted for like a hot second. Let's freeze everything. I'm just gonna have to use these as safety precautions more than anything else. Like, oh no, I'm going to get hit. Use the use the big move. The big moves are satisfying to watch watch trigger. Alright. So far so good to get uh so far so good, let's get out of here. Grab as much as I can. Don't have enough for another freeze. Did I not get hit there? There we go. Okay. Half as much money, but in less than half the time. Corrupted fairies with 35 base health move rapidly towards the portal. Oh, this one. If I want to do it again. Oh, destroy them. I don't like that. Portal phantoms or energy fairies. Let's go with the chickens. It's the least harmful of them. Okay, so we have explosive rune seeker. Chance to freeze enemies. So I think we had this one earlier and it was pretty good. I didn't hate... I didn't hate the idea of the Divine Quiver. Let's buy the Frost Bomb. Let's do the Snowman Totem. Frozen enemies are affected by other spells. Chance to launch two bolts. Yeah, let's just try and go for like a big frost synergy here. Okay, those bombs are kind of fun. But what I really like are those snowmen. Okay, the other thing we want to do is keep an eye out for chickens. I want to... I need some empty calories in here. Yeah, we don't want to stick around, but we don't want to delay too much. Because, yeah, threat does carry over. There's the chicken. I think I froze it. And did actually take some damage there. There's one. I kind of wish there was a chicken tracker somewhere that I could work with. But yeah, I think the answer is never farm the first level. You might be able to get a lot of money, but you're going to be there for far too long. Farming the second level right now feels not too bad. Later on, bit of a question mark. Mostly I just want to go until the treasure chests stop spawning. Once they've ofi officially stopped, then we then we get out of here. Whoop. Did I avoid that? I did. Magically.
I know those frost bombs are giving us a very nice amount of AoE here to work with. Yeah, being able oh, being able to freeze the uh explodey boys. I think that's actually been a bit of a saving grace here. Dang, got me. However, it seems like we've um kind of run the gamut on chests. So we should probably just get out of here, because they're no longer dropping. And because they're no longer dropping, chickens are no longer spawning. No more chickens means no more healing, or fake healing. Just mess those guys up. What? Is it like directly? It must have been directly on top of me or something. Okay. And do those things... Oh no, they, they do actually drop useful bits. I was worried for a hot second. That the... Uh... There we go. That the well, I guess it worried isn't the right word. I thought for a hot second that the um ugh, that the flies didn't drop anything. Let's go for the next fifty gems you collect don't count, so that's barely a problem. See, when you recharge your staff, fire a bolt in a random direction, deals damage, chance to freeze enemies, repeat for every charge your staff holds. I like that. And Natrix, chance gain, or uh, staff gains extra attack speed and recharge speed after using an innate ability. It's not bad. Second of invulnerability when using your innate. It's not terrible. I do use my innate ability an amount. Okay, totems gain range, not that helpful. What does that one do? They aren't mutually exclusive. Why is this one X'd off? I have no idea. Okay, light rune, expansion, charging totem, no. Totems mark two enemies with Nova runes. I guess I should go for those totems. I don't think we want Blazing Bird. But I... Oh, I did buy it. You're right. Me. Do one more reroll. Let's see, when totems are first created, five enemies nearby are struck. For 25 damage, chance to freeze targets. Let's grab that. Now let's lock this one. It's probably worth it. Oh. Oh, totems disappear after you leave their radius. I was not aware that that's how the totems works. Or maybe that that's not how the snowmen work. Also, chickens apparently don't just spawn off of chess. Oh boy. I guess I can give these guys a solid yote if I need to. Okay, we got the chicken. Let's get up here, grab this if I can. 
grab it all. If this game has meta progression and I've missed it, I'm going to be slightly perplexed. And mostly the only thing I would want is just like pick up radius. Anything that makes it just slightly easier for me to grab all the goodies would be lovely. Oh, do we already we already got the uh, portal? It seems like it's charging on its own, so I'm just gonna chill. Because I want the chicken. Freezed a lot of them. Grab as much as I can before the doors close on me. All right, eh, 800, not bad. And we're getting our health up. Let's go with Burden of Blood. Okay, so we want totems gain extra range. And let's go for the Quaking Totem. Because this does, like, an AoE. I guess it doesn't. And do I want the Charging Totem? Not overwhelmingly, no. Okay, so we're getting some... Ow. We're getting some weird beam stuff going on with my totems now, which is kind of what I was hoping for. Grab these. Okay, we got one of the blood totems already, so that's a good sign. Means what I'm doing is vaguely correct. Yeah, I, I seem to be just churning through a lot of them very quickly. Yeah, I guess I guess I'm just gonna play this like a tower defense game or something. Okay, just give him the boot. Grab the money. Don't put myself in too compromising of a position here. Oh, I wonder if I can't hurt those guys. Well, they're locked in like that. Uh, let's see. Do we hang out here? We will, but slowly. I want that chicken. And it seems it seems like the totems are doing a very good job for me. How's my health? 84. Hey, we might actually have like a winner here, maybe. I'll see if I can find any other like cool totem related abilities. I was hoping I could do more with the frost bombs, to be honest. Okay, let's hang back up out here. Because I might as well complete my objectives if I can. There we go. It's done. Oh, can you kill those portal dudes? You can. Also, it's boss time. This should be a reasonably easy... I wonder if you can freeze him. No, boss, boss does not get frozen. Doesn't mean you can't just completely dunk on the dude. But... this open, grab every bit that I can without putting myself too much risk. I got 84 HP, so that's... Ow. 82 HP. 80 HP. Unfortunately, there's a lot of moving parts of this fight, and it's gonna cook my brain a little bit. Trying to... Ow. Trying to pay attention to all of them.
Music's picking up. Hello, I would like some of this chicken bees. Don't you dare prevent me from picking it all up, damn it. They did. I should have gone for the freeze. But it's okay. I'm doing I'm doing fine and I'm feeling fine. Mostly. Wanna grab all the goodies? Okay, I had 70, 77 HP after a boss fight ain't bad. Okay, find and destroy arcane mines that appear half buried all over the arena by attacking them. They detonate, dealing damage in a large area. I uh, don't like that one that much. Lose half your current health if you survive the round, restored to 100%. Yeah, this will be a short round, but that's fine. Hmm. Steady Shot Curse. Extra base damage to staff bolts, but longer recharge time. Rune targets for all rune type abilities, but less targets can be damaged by beams. Are we even. These are interesting. The target. These curses. Can I. Check my inventory. Because that's a bolt. That's runes. Those are a couple of beams. Ah, uh, so we need the pulse? To maybe unlock that one. So this one's not a terrible idea. Wait, I gotta check. Every two seconds, launch an explosive rune seeker. Yeah, so none of these actually increase the... Hmm. Buy that one. Do we want to do totems recharge faster? Probably. None of these trigger beams. I don't think I want damage to the staff bolts. Not on this round. But I think that one's worth it. We'll just go for a very rune-focused build. That's really good. Recharge your staff while Quaking Totem is active. Triggers a pulse of damage. Both of these are great. I'm gonna lock that one. All right. So this should put me kind of in an interesting position. So we're gonna be avalanching a little harder. We are going to be uh, getting a lot of chickens, apparently. We're gonna be avalanching harder. We are going to be Let's see. We are going to be lasering slightly less, but now that I have that upgrade, we kind of know not to go for, uh, not to go for any more beams and to go for more runes if we can. Other thing I'm going to do, options, we're going to turn on controls, auto aim enabled. That's slightly unfortunate. I was hoping auto aim would come with auto fire. Okay, so I'm gonna turn that back off again. My index finger is starting to get a little cranky from just holding it down constantly here, but... I'll just deal. Are we already done? That would happen? Wow, that was... Oh, right. This is the bounty rune level. 
Of course that was fast. Okay, 50, next 50 gems. I don't like that one. Let's just go with that. Okay, so we have this sucker. He does beams though. Yeah, the problem is now summon two constructs at a time, but they take one less attack each. Nah. Totems last longer and remain for a while, or mark enemies with a blade with blade runes. When you recharge your staff. So we want to go for a rune-based run. Can't afford it, but I'm gonna grab it. When any rune that isn't rune blade triggers, chance to trigger rune blade. Every 200 beam damage you deal, next rune blade explodes. Yeah, so maybe that curse wasn't as worth going for. If you had like a hyper focus build, maybe. Because oh, these these fairies are constant and way more numerous than I thought they would be. Yeah, I was under the impression that the fairies would be a uh, little slow or something, and ah. Uh... But they are not slow. Okay, that's a dragon thing. We haven't lost too much HP here. The fact that there's two of them at a time, too, is extra stinky. I mean, I'm coping. But, uh... Oif. Grab that. I think we're making plenty of money anyway. Oh yeah, we're making tons. Walked into a damn bomb. Trying to get get the money. It's fine. Let's see. Let's go with this one. Let's see. Totems leave behind money. When they get blown up, sure. Let's grab the sword runes. See what else we got. Charge up your staff. Five enemies with snow guard are stuck, struck by beams. Ah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, I should, I should not have picked that one cursed ability, but it's fine. Okay, so I'm supposed to run around destroying these landmines. I wonder if they can kill me. Ow. Interesting that they can't trigger each other. The chicken, ow. Unfortunately, this game does seem to just become slightly unmanageable very quickly. Guess I must have already got the, the uh, mines really quickly. Uh, that's fine.
If you don't need a chicken every eight seconds, you take six damage, then two damage again for every second. Every two seconds till you do. Eat 16 chickens. Chickens spawn regularly, but heal three less this round. Let's <sighs> be a chicken chaser. Why not? Oh. Chilling curse. Yes. And pick those two up. Okay. There's our next chicken. This is hilarious chaos. At least I'm informed where the chickens are. I want to pace it out a little bit if I can. Oh, the chickens disappear too. Of course they chick. Of ch course the chickens disappear. Yep. Go with that. I was hoping to use this level to heal, but uh, that ain't happening. Like I said earlier, game kind of operates on chaos logic. After a certain point. It's fun, but it is, uh, freaking dangerous. Okay, we're, we're getting our HP back up. I just have to constantly keep an eye out for cast off chickens here. Freeze a lot of them. This is a boss fight. Uh, don't tell me, are we, are we still burdened by chicken? No. Okay, this is a totally regular, normal, whatever fight. Okay, avoid for a little while. Boss is here, get up, get him with a nuke. I might as well get him with a frosty, frosty blast. Seeing as that's an extra 60 damage, ish. Okay. Also seems like it's kind of practical for me to be staying on the vertical compared to where the boss is. Only problem is I don't always know where he is. But at least those horizontal shots, yeah. any more chickens. It seems like you can kind of mess them up here. Nope, don't have enough thaumaturgic energy. There we go. Wow, this stuff dropped up here. But that's okay. Freeze a lot of them and give it a nice scoot. Oh. Okay. Let's go with that one. That could actually potentially be a problem, but we'll see. I could go for the blazing bird. Let's see, so we've got everything for the frost bomb. Except for this one. I have no idea why that barrage won't show up. And we've got everything for the snowman. We don't have everything for that one, but I don't care. We got pretty much everything for the quake totem. We're just lacking max targets. And triggers extra times when it's destroyed. So it's really just the rune blade. Oh. Can't burn everything anyway.
Yeah, that's interesting. Oh. 10% chance to summon a totem. A turret totem near another totem when it spawns. Turret totems last five or fire five damage bolts. Sounds good. We do not want steady shot curse. Totems collect collectibles for you. Reduce damage to bolts. This would actually have been kind of good on a different build. Chance to burn enemies? Nope. Invulnerability when using your innate? Actually very good. Let's go with that. Lock this one. Oh, I still have three stages left. Oh boy. Yeah, so I think we want to just focus on completionism. Things are getting kind of expensive anyway, so my build is mostly crystallized. I don't actually know how many um, slots I have left, but the chances of me filling it out entirely is low. Yes, my totems just pick stuff up for me on the regular. Thus proving that totem builds are superior. Oh, this makes me want to play uh, Neophyte again. I should, actually. Right now I'm um, kind of in a... I don't want to say a liminal state as far as like my usual game coverage goes, but it's the Steam Spring Sale started, so there's not much coming out. And so that puts me in a... You know, just kind of one of those spots where it's just like, oh... Yeah, what do I cover? I don't know. Let's go back and check my backlog. Is there anything I missed? All right. I've gotten a lot of that completed. Well, what else? Uh, let's go back and cover some of the old favorites. You know, Atomic Rops, uh, Neophyte, Tower of Guns. I should do a video on Tower of Guns. Like, Steam sales are kind of weird. Uh, they're kind of nice because I get to effectively do whatever I want within the bounds of like what my channel what people like on my channel okay let's just freeze that lad the the portal creatures are kind of rough and absolutely going to uh mess my day up if i let them get close to me oh there was a chest there ow just is just working altogether too well which is nice I think it's just going to be my lack of HP that's going to be an issue but I got 3,000 off of that I can only get 12 more upgrades so yeah we're in a good spot uh, let's see bounty runes ain't bad rerolls are more expensive let's go with this one Okay, Rune Whip triggers in the opposite direction of its primary target as well. Some invulnerability. Yeah, we don't care too much about beams right now. More totems, though. Pick that up. All right. Bad time to have my hand off the keyboard, but it's fine. Yeah, I just get casual when uh, when I'm on a menu. I don't need to worry about anything, but the game starts too quick. So, uh, oops, it's fine. Okay, there was a there is a chicken. Good, because we do need to get my health back up. Oh, because this is burden of bounty, so I'm. I'm just trying to stay, play, keep away from my enemies, which like they do die very fast. But I'm in kind of a fine position, mostly. 
And I think I think my decision to go for the runes over the um, the runes over the beams was probably the correct one for this round. I think in the future I might try and go for a more synergistic approach instead. But who knows? It's definitely one of those where I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to be kind of... I don't want to say, like, patient. Uh, but this game hopefully is going to get some more updates that will drastically change how it works. And so I'm kind of hoping... Uh, I'm kind of hoping some of them give us more build options for, like, weird synergies and, and effects. Because right now it seems like there's three different kind of archetypes. Four. Beam, Bolt, Rune, and Totem. And Totem kind of exists in kind of this weird liminal space within that where it actually, uh, well, I'm using liminal too much. Uh, border. Let's see, defeat squids. Uh, let's go for this one. No need to get the burn. Any effect that triggers a totem is... When a totem is destroyed, triggers twice. We don't need Divine Quiver. I only have slots for five. So I can't do too much here. Okay, let's just go with this. I should only be able to get, like, two more, but that's fine. Okay, so this is Burden of Defense. So to some degree, what we want to do is hang out in the bloody center. I'm not cool with that as much. Freeze the heck out, out of everything. I wanted those extra totem, the charging totems, not because I specifically want the charging totem, uh, but because I want more totems of any variety. It doesn't really matter which. We are absolutely swimming in resources. I'm literally incapable of picking them all up. We are getting so much, which is, you know, a good place to be. That's why I was hoping there was some level of meta progression so I could increase my pickup radius. Uh, just so I could, you know, greed more. Okay. Cripes, that's a lot of... That's a lot of everything. Ow? Uh, barely ow. Yeah, I have no idea if these fairies are actually really capable of getting to the center or not. It hasn't felt like it so far. Alright. This was a chaotic mess. I have 4,000 gold, and I'm not going to be able to do much with it. There's, like, precious little left for me to grab. Yeah, I can afford two more upgrades. Well, what's the shortest one? Let's go with that. go with those two. So I'm pretty sure I can't buy anything else. Maximum boons equipped. Yep. All right. Threat level. Fierce. It's fine. Okay. Burden of brevity. So that means we're only here for 15 seconds before the boss shows up. 
collectibles collectibles go away much faster, but who cares? I'm full health going into the final fight, which uh, is pretty good. Hey, and there it is. I like the boon and burden system. I think that's actually kind of cool. The boss fights are interesting, too. I don't know how, like, deeply I care. Uh, or, like, how compelled I'm going to find them. Or compelling, I find them. But it's nice to have, uh... It's not really a bullet heaven. Like, once again, Gunlocks just borrow borrowed a lot of ideas from bullet heavens. Uh, namely the leveling scheme. Without actually being one, really. And then this is... You know, apart from the massive amount of abilities that I'm just chucking out at a mo given moments, doesn't really share a whole lot of the DNA beyond, just, like, those design sensibilities, but what a good base to work with. Like, the different abilities comboing together uh, is just fun to see, and there's a, like, really hard feeling of synergies, which I'm, I'm an absolute sucker for synergies when it comes to these games. Give me, like, a ton of abilities that work together and affect each other. I was noticing, like, quite a number of the totem abilities came with, um... Uh, it came with, like, boons that affected other abilities of the same type. So, for example, like, a lot of the totems came with upgrades that boosted other totems. I really like systems like that, because there's that feeling of, like... Oh, let's not be there. Uh... It's that feeling of like, yeah, I'm not just picking a bunch of semi-related abilities. These abilities actively work together. Uh, not only just like in terms of effectiveness, but then uh, actively helping each other. And that feels really good to me. As opposed to completely dis disparate abilities that are just kind of like a good example of this. I don't know, there, there's a bullet heaven I played recently I gave some advice for. It was like, it was really, really solid base, but there was kind of that feeling of like, every single one of your like, base power-ups. Oh, Vampire Survivors is an easy example of this. Like, nothing that you get from the throwing axes benefits the knives. They just benefit from the same passives simultaneously. So you kind of want to pick them up together. And that's it. I don't find that to be like, bad? But it's so much more compelling when everything works together and has, like, cool perks for each other. Especially if you have some, like, cross-disciplinary perks. Like, hey, this rune triggers a laser. And now it's like, oh, I want to go for both of those now. That can feel really good to me. But for now, at least, uh, this video has gone on for quite a while, but we had a very satisfying win there. So, if you want to play Boons and Burdens yourselves, it is uh, available for five bucks for Steam Early Access which is more than a steal for the quality I've seen so far, and if this gets the updates it deserves, and like the extra power-ups, the more options, maybe some level of meta progression. I think the big one that I would want is just some basic stuff like pickup radius. What I want is a bunch of A, B options. Give me like 10, 20 talents that you have to pay to unlock, and then you have two choices. You can only have one, uh, one of each choice uh, on at a time being, like, one of each duo enabled at a time. And so one of them might be like more pickup radius or 10% uh, of all collectibles that disappear are collected automatically. Like those two together, uh, it's like, well, do I want to just go the lazy option or the proactive option? Um, another one would be like skips and rerolls. Uh, some level of skips and rerolls. Well, rerolls, like maybe free rerolls and especially banishes. A couple of banishes would do this game a lot of good, where you can just be like, I never want to see this power up, please stop showing it to me. Because we were getting a lot of those, like, curses that it's like, hey, this one does burning bonus, and it's just like, I literally can't burn anything. Maybe it's just if some of the curses were mutually exclusive, like, hey, do you want the frost one, or do you want the fire one? And maybe they even show up simultaneously, and once you pick one of them, the other one's gone forever, or at least for the rest of the run. Little stuff like that would go a long way, but mostly I think this is a solid base and I want to see where it goes. Uh, I should probably also go check the uh, the Gunlocked expansion at some point because uh, I think I missed it. But for now at least, if you guys like this video in any way, shape, or form, 
Leave me a like helps more than you know, and if you want to see more rad new games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons to check out and show off. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.